Okay, if you got your outline, the title is we're going to look at is spiritual formation, God's plan for recovery. So before we jump into it, I want to bring your attention to the board again, just to get your mind renewed here from last week. Um, we've got, I don't want to say time periods, because this is not really not time, but you got eternity that runs forward and backwards, and there's no beginning and there's no end, so eternity is just there. But in eternity past, if we can say past, and really, you know, <clears throat> Ephesians 1.4 is huge and I don't know if we've even got everything out of it but it does put us in God's mind before creation before the foundation of the world he chose us in him meaning that in God's mind and we, we showed you about the eulogy is that he spoke your name spoke your destiny spoke everything about you we know that from Jeremiah 1 5 he said before you were in your mother's womb I knew you and I called you to be a prophet to the nations. So his vocation was already laid out. The call was laid out. The chosen was laid out. Everything or the choosing. But Ephesians 1, 4 puts us, all of us, in eternity past somewhere, at least in the mind of God. Okay? So what happens, he creates man. Finally, we, we make our appearance in time. As he creates time through creating the, the world the sun, moon, stars, earth, all that. And then he places us in whatever time period you were born here. But you were born um, after Adam. In Adam all dies. So Adam sinned and you put the fall somewhere here. The fall caused this purpose that he had for you and the existence he created you for got flawed by Adam's sin. So everything that he raised you for in his mind, which is, you got to understand, you're, you are perfect in his eyes when he creates you in his mind. There's no flaw there. The flaw came when we're born into this world through Adam. That's why in Romans 5, in Adam all die, in Christ all live. And Christ came to redeem us from the fall and put us back where we need to be. And for the 70, 80, 90 year span that we've got down here, he's going to be working on us because our mind does not get regenerated. Our mind is still based on the old that we came out of. Remember he said, you're a new creation, old things pass away, all things become new. Well, your mind still has all the old. And to get into the new, you've got to get rid of the old mindset, which we've talked about which is your mind, emotions, and will on this end. Spirit, soul, body. So this is what's happening here. Now, when you look at the title, Spiritual Formation, that's here. That's in this time frame. So what's he doing? He's forming Christ in you. Now, now knowing that, because what he's doing is preparing us for eternity, because really, earth and heaven was never separated in the beginning. God's plan was to have heaven on earth. They were synced together. But the fall separated that. So his intention is to bring heaven back on earth. Now I want to say something as a sidebar here. I was raised, and I got legalistic messages preached to me for years of how bad I was. But I was born again. So they were preaching to the old man not preaching to the new man. God's not going to remind you of what he put on the cross in Christ. What he's, what he, in this spiritual formation, what he's going to remind you of is who he saw you to be, created you to be here. Because that's who you are now because of Christ. But the mind needs to be renewed. And revelation needs to come. <clears throat> to unveil to you by the Holy Spirit your true self. Now, we talked about that, that book that we... Did anybody ever get that book, by the way, that, we, that I talked about? Which one? I can't remember the name of it. Um, three weeks ago. Um, that, that's about self-talk, but I don't think that's the name of the book. Yeah, I got it. Okay. That's key. That's, that's a huge piece right there. And I may teach off of that on the radio because I'm telling you that 
That is what God's doing. He's going after the lies and deceptions that we have been told all our lives. All right, so that's the spiritual formation. And this is God's plan for recovery. He's going to recover what he destined for you to have in the beginning that you lost over here in Adam, and now you're getting it back as, as revelation and renewing of your mind and the spiritual formation that he's doing by the Holy Spirit is happening in this journey that we're on in this 70 to 90 year span. All right? Now, I was raised with all these messages about how bad the world is, okay? And we know the world's bad. But what is bad? Is the world bad or is the system bad? It's the system. Doesn't mean the world's bad. But they just dump, just put it all together and it's bad. So we've, we've created get me out of here mentality. Get me out of this body of sin, right? Um, we're, they're hammering on us all the time how bad we... And we've, we've got this, the church has this dysfunctional mode that they're in based on lies about their humanity. And, and Gnosticism, back in the early days, Gnosticism was be about the spirit realm, get out of this body of flesh and stay in that spirit realm, and they're always wanting you to exit earth, exit body, exit mind, exit everything, and just get into this spirit realm. But as I told you in the beginning, you can't separate these three. Just like you can't separate your basement from your attic. It's a house. You take the basement out, boom, it falls. You, you don't do that. So you can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm a spiritual man. I understand what you're saying, but do you understand what you're saying when you say that? So you're saying I'm spiritual, meaning that you've separated yourself, that you're, you're, you're too holy to be any of this. And we, it's, it's just a really huge piece that needs to be restructured or deconstructed, if you will. But the thing is, you can't separate these. And there's nothing wrong with your human, your humanity. Okay? There's absolutely nothing wrong with your humanity. Because God entered into it. This is why the incarnation is so important. And you don't hear, ever hear anybody talk on it because it's a vital part. If we understand that Jesus in heaven came down in human form... You understand, he entered into a human body. How bad can a human body be if he entered into it? How bad is the earth that he, if he came and lived 33 and a half years? You understand something? He was bringing back that there's no more separation and there's no more bad in you as a person except your unrenewed mind. And the earth is not bad. It's the world system that's bad. And this escapism out of body, out of the world, out of everything, is, is got you looking over here, and you're missing out on the spiritual formation. You're missing out on how to be human because you're trying to escape your humanity because of the church today that's got you as a spiritual person. Does, make, does that make sense? So Christ came to... Sh Adam did not show us how to be human. He, 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 he's flawed. He blew it. When, he, when God said, let us make man, that was, wasn't complete. Adam didn't even get a head start on how to be man before the enemy came in there and screwed it up. So we don't know what it means to be human for 4,000 years. If anything, we, we, the, our humanity is fading as long as we don't understand humanity. Our humanity's fading. The more darker we get, the more lies and deceptions is happening. We're less human than we should be. But Christ comes in the incarnation, and he's the only one to show us how to be human. Okay? No one else could, no one else did but him. So then he comes the second time after his resurrection. He comes inside of us to show us how to be human. But listen to this, and this I said all that to say this. So no law, that's repeat. Is that we will not be fully human, and this is going to stretch your minds because this is not being taught. We will not be fully human <clears throat> till over here. Oh, wait, what? I thought my spirit man was going to be over here. How many thought that? 
How many thought, we'll just shed this old coat off and I'll be a spiritual person. I'll be a spirit over here in this. And thank God I left this all behind. When you understand new heavens, new earth, heaven is going to come down. 1 Corinthians 15 says Jesus will present the kingdoms <clears throat> back to God and God will come down. And it's going to be a physical thing. Now God, the new Jerusalem, we will be in God, but how it is physical, I don't know. Nobody knows. It's a, it's, it's, it's a guess. You know, you can talk about buildings and you can talk about this, that, and the other. But the new Jerusalem is your placement in God. And what he does physically, and it will be a physical place. Because when you, if you could look up into heaven right now and see, now I know Christ is in us, but he's everywhere. Remember what he said to Nicodemus? I'm on earth, I'm in heaven at the same time. He's in heaven, he's in you at the same time. It's called omni what? Present. Present. Now, if you could peer into the heavens, what would you see <coughs> on the throne? The Father, okay, which he is a spirit, spirit so that's a spirit, so I don't know how that, it's going to, what's that going to look like, but it's a spirit, and on the right hand is who? What will he look like? Right now, what's he look like right now in heaven? Exactly. But people, and it's just a, it's, it's a heresy, they think he put his body behind, now he's spirit again. He's human in heaven. Firstborn of many brethren, us afterwards. Now, if you look to the left, if there is a left, and who, who would you see there? Well, you need to tell Jesse, Jesse Duplantis that because he went up to heaven and he couldn't, see the, couldn't find the Holy Spirit and he said, where's the Holy Spirit? Oh, he's down on earth working. That's heresy. This is the crap that they had to fight against. Back in Athanasius' time, the Cappadonian fathers, Gregory, not Nicaea, these guys fought to keep the Trinity in whole and not spin it out into heresy. So yes, the Holy Spirit's down here, but he's also up there because the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy, Holy Spirit is? God. So you can't do that. So that makes me question, did you even go to heaven, dude? And half of these people probably didn't. That's pretty hard, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, That's but it's, this, this is how you differentiate between the false teaching and the liars out there and those who just think they saw something. Had a dream, ate pizza that night, and went to heaven. Well, his theology's all screwed up. He needs to teach him the Trinity. Okay? Now, well, I could go off. <laughs> Let's get into the message. Let's look at investments. I, 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 this, as I was putting this together, um, investment, the word investment came to me. So let's look at it. When we hear the word investment, we usually think of money. But we can also invest time into something effort into something, love into a relationship. You're investing love into a relationship. And the purpose of investing is what? A payoff, right? You want something back. You want to get something back from what you've invested into. So you get something back from the investments. Now, we've been talking about rewards on Sunday morning about how we live down here in this 70, 90 year span as we allow the Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of Christ in us that will get rewarded called works. Our works will get rewarded. God's a rewarder of works. Hebrew says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seeking, therefore, is an investment. When I'm seeking him, I'm investing in him, and the payoff is reward. Now, that's not my motive. We know that. We've talked about motive. But it still, nonetheless, when I invest into the kingdom, he promises me a reward. All right? Seeking the kingdom of God first is an investment in one's life and um, takes time and energy, but you're storing up treasure, and that's the payoff on the other end. Now, John tells us to love not the world, meaning, now what? Let's go back to this board here. Now, when he finally decides when we're going to make our appearance, our debut, if you will, in time, he tells us, I've placed you in the world, but you are not of the world, so therefore do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world, 
For if you fall in love with this, the love of the Father is not in you. Okay? So what happens is, and it's the case in a lot of Christians' lives, probably more than what you want to admit, they fall in love with the world. <clears throat> they, are, they fall in love with the system. Okay? They eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. <clears throat> All right? So what are we investing in? Now watch this. Many are investing in the world, the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So where are we investing our time, our talent, our energies in this time span? Where, where's our investment? Is, do we believe what God says about investing in Him, the kingdom, in Christ, the life of Christ? Or do we get caught up in investing in this? All of us are getting some type of a payoff. Now in Matthew, um, we are, okay, so do not love the world, the things in the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in Him. But then the next one, it's John. Okay, next one's John. Or I'm sorry, Matthew. No. It's not? You don't have it. I don't have Matthew 6, 21, where he says where your treasure is, where your heart is, is where your treasure is. So he's saying, now here's how you're, here's the litmus test for you who may not know. Where's your heart? It's what you're investing in. Where your heart is, is where your treasure is, and that's going to be what you're investing in. If it's the kingdom and the things of God, then the payoff's great on the other end. But if it's here, then what else does he have to say to us? Okay? Which we're going to see that here in a minute, those who, who want to invest in this world, in this life, and not in the life to come. So let's look at God's recovery plan. After the fall, God started working out his plan, reconciling the world through Jesus. Christ is the answer. Okay, so we've got to know that in my dilemma, there's an answer how to live this 70 to 90 year span are we just messing up on the whole no, John? Yeah. He, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I gotta know that going into it, going into this. Somebody's got I'm I'm coming to this place blind. I'm kinda I'm coming out of my mother's womb completely dead in my trespassing sins, Ephesians chapter two. And someone's got to illuminate to me, tell me about who I was in the in the very beginning. Okay? So watch this. We're not trying to find... When we, when we witness to people, we're not asking them to make a decision for God. Because Jesus said, I didn't, you didn't choose me, but what? I chose you. So we've got to tell people they've already been chosen by God when? Right here. Right? You didn't, don't think that you came up with the idea and decided to accept Jesus... Someone opened your eyes and you came because you were already chosen in him before the foundation of the world and you came. Now, now you know he's the way, the truth, and the life. So now your whole life gets altered here once you're, once you're born again. Does that make sense? All right. In him we live, move, and have our being from that point on after born again. Look at Acts. Do I have that one? No. Nope. In Acts chapter um, 17, verse 28, it says, We live, move, have our being in here, in him. And Colossians 1, 27 says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. And of course, John 15 tells us about the union that we have, the mystical union that we are abiding that's supposed to be producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So that's the recovery plan. That's what's happening here. We're being recovered from the fall, also called spiritual formation. So let's look at spiritual formation defined. It's the process of being conformed into the image of Jesus for the glory of God, Romans 8.29. Now look at Romans 8.29. We've looked at this before, but we'll look at it again. Because those whom he foreknew, that's right here. Okay? Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. In other words, he already planned for them to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So, where were you on this on this chart here? Where were you foreknown? Yeah. It's already passed. Where are you going to be conformed to the image of Jesus? Right here. Not here and not here. Here's where you're going to be conformed. Here's where he foreknew you, but the fall happens. Let's put that in there. The and now you need to be Re, re, uh, recreated. I think that's even what the um, Greek has. 
recreated in Christ Jesus. I think that's um, Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified, I think. But nevertheless, so over here is where I'm being conformed. So those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed. So you, you ready for this? I, I, I said this to you a long time ago, but it may went over your head. Let me say it again. Do you realize that you were already fixed before you fell? That Jesus already saved you before you got lost. Jesus is the Jesus was the Lamb slain when before, before the foundation. God had already planned your recovery before you fell over here. He He predestined you. He foreknew you over here. Knew the fall was going to happen. Christ already. This is before it ever happened. Christ says they're going to fall. I'll go and, and I'll recover them. This was all done before time even start, started ticking. He already saved you before you got lost. The recovery was, what's what he went with Genesis chapter 3? He already prophesied the seed would go, was going to come and crush. It's just that time, it has to be played out in time. But eternity, tell me when it happens. It's going to blow your mind. But in eternity, when does this happen? Eternity doesn't have a future. That's just for us. In, in, in understanding the time. But eternity doesn't have a future because it doesn't have an end. And eternity doesn't have a past because it doesn't have a beginning. So how do you see eternity? Peter said the best I can come up with a day is like a thousand years. Okay? So how do you see eternity? Eternity is now. Eternity is like our present. Now. Except now, I just said now became my past. But in eternity, now wrap your mind around this, Jesus is already crucified. The crucifixion's, the crucifixion's happening. Your choosing is happening. Everything is now. It doesn't get a past. It doesn't get a future. God just sees everything as is. The whole thing as is. How that works, I don't know. And there's no way no one can know that because we, are, we, we only understand time. We didn't come out of eternity. We don't understand that. Does that make sense? So he's predestined you to be conformed. So when you're over here, it's like you were over here. You're going to go back. You're going to actually be for eternity, once you die and get over here, what you were destined to be on this end. But the spiritual formation is what he's doing right now to prepare you not only to prepare you for the future, but so you can experience today. Okay, let me ask you this. When do you get eternal life? When's eternal life happen for you and me? See, a lot of people think it's when you die. Let's put death there. The fall <clears throat> was in death. Some people think they'll live eternally after they die. But you became eternal over here. And then when you came into time, you're still, etern you're still an eternal being. You're, you're an eternal spirit, your soul. You're, you're still eternal here because you're eternal in the mind of God. He creates you, and you're going to be eternal over here. So your, your, eternal, right, your eternal life started when your eyes were opened for you to know your awareness. Before that, you figure that out. But I'm telling you, when you got born again, you were open to your eternity. You were, you were now privy to your eternal, the, 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 your eternal destiny, if you will, from that point on. So I want you to understand, the reason why I'm saying that is time, now ready, get ready for this, time and eternity, when you're born again and your eyes are open to this, time and eternity collide. They exist now together in you. So you're not only a temporal being, 80 year span, you're now an eternal being forever. And you can't limit yourself down here on earth in the temporal. You, got, you have to now bring in the eternal aspect of your life, which is bigger than the temporal, more real than the temporal. In fact, the eternal is what's guiding the temporal here, should be, but it's the opposite in most people's mm -hmm. lives. All right, so spiritual formation starts after the fall 
And right here is the scripture. And let me just tell you this. This is why you exist. This is the will of God for you. It's not your job. It's not your marriage. All that's fine and dandy. But this is what he's primarily going after. And the minute you let, the minute you go after anything in your life other than allowing this to happen, you're on shaky ground. And he will take away what you're making an idol out of. Okay? Believe, and when it happens, I'm going to say, told you so. I can do that. And I will do that. Just know that. Because I'm warning you right now, to forearm is to forewarn. The minute you get out of the mode of understanding why you're here on earth, you're already in idolatry of some type because you've fallen in love with the world, and that's going to end. He'll purge that out. He'll take that away from you because he doesn't care about that. <clears throat> that's not what he didn't create you to be married. He didn't create you for your job. He created you to be in him, to be one with him, and for that spiritual formation to be in the process of what you're doing down here. We'll get into that more in a minute. <clears throat> now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, another scripture that backs this up. Now, watch this script, watch this scripture. Now, I highlighted some stuff here. I want to bring it out. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. Wait a minute. So there's your Trinity right there. If you go to my church, our church, and you walk through the, you see a sign on the, on the, um, on the um, outside building. We have a sign. Anybody know what it says? Or have you walked by it so long that you don't even know what it says? <laughs> Restoration Church. Okay, but what does it say underneath of it? Something spirit. Okay, so when I put that sign, it messed everybody up. It messed everybody up. Okay? Because they, they're like, what, they thought I was a cult. New age. What, what's on the sign says, where the Spirit is Lord. What does that mean? That means we let the Spirit be Lord over our services as over our lives. But it messed them up because they're like, the Spirit is Lord, the Lord is the Spirit. What is that? It's the Trinity! And you're going to call that new age or cult? Right? Now the Lord is the Spirit. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. In fact, I think Paul calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Jesus. Three, three, one essence, three parts. Look at this. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. Now watch. And we all, with unveiled face, reflecting the glory of the Lord. Now, you can just forget that, because sometimes he... Let's just go right to the meat here. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we are being transformed into the same... What did Romans 8.29 say that we're being conformed in? The same Spirit. Go back. Conform to image. I want you to see this word image. You see this word image here? Go to the next one. Reflecting the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into an image. Same, same image. Now, if you go to, do I have, do I have, Go, go to the very last slide. That might mess you up, but go, and then I want you to come back to this. Go to the very last slide, Genesis 1.26. Let us make man. Yeah. Let us make man what? In our image. So you understand? What we are called to do here is be image bearers. Okay? Go back to the Corinthians. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we, with unveiled face... Reflecting the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory into glory. That's your spiritual formation I'm talking about. Okay? Just as, who does this? Who does the transforming from glory to glory? He starts off telling you, he ends with, the, with telling you. Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Lord. Does that make sense? Now, stay there. 
Now, I want you to see that. Let that sink in. Because I told you 50 years ago, and even further back than 50 years ago, we have said, I don't want to do this. See, I don't want Romans 8, 29. I don't want this. And John 15, I don't want that. Here's what I want. I want to have it all done in one service. So let's have a special service. Call it Breakthrough. You're going to get your breakthrough. This is your breakthrough. Your breakthrough happened 2,000 years ago. I just can't get it in your head to get it. And once this, the, the, veil un, un, the veil gets lifted and you see the truth, the truth what? There's nothing about breakthrough there. I'm going to tell you something right now. And this is, this is what has bothered me most of my life is that every church wants special services as a quick fix to bypass spiritual, spiritual formation. And you're not doing it. I'm so sick of every weekend, somebody's got a breakthrough service. Somebody's got a miracle service. Somebody's got this, that, and the other. Now, I believe in healing and deliverances and all that, but I'm telling you, you're not going to get a quick fix here. This is not his design. It's designed to do it this way, from glory into glory. You don't get one laying on the hands and now you're in the glory realm. Does that make sense? Well, you may not like it, but that's, that's what God's work. It's going to take God your whole lifetime to do that. And one service, calling it a breakthrough, ain't going to fix it. And this is why people in their third, fourth, fifth marriage, and in probably their 20th church, if you really want to get real, they keep running trying to fix their fix. Bob Mumford said, if you try to, God puts you in a fix, and you try to fix that fix with another fix, he'll create a fix to fix the fix you just tried to fix. You ain't getting out of it. You're not going to get through this in an instantaneous way. So, yeah, if you want to go to a special service to get, to get healed, go ahead. You want to get delivered, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. But you can also get that through spiritual transformation. Now let's look at this word here. What is that? What is, remember what the Greek word for that is? Huh, anybody know? Caterpillar, butterfly, what happens? Metamorphosis. So what's happening here, the change is a metamorphosis that you're changing into the same image. The image, he says, let us make man in our image. He got flawed. And now he's going to pick it back up in Christ, put you in Christ and pick, back, pick it back up. And you, he's going to show you in this 79 year span what it is to be fully human. But you will not know full humanity until over here because he's the only one fully human. We're still learning how to be human in a spiritual um, formation. Learning how to be human, not learning how to be spiritual. Because you'll be spiritual through your soul and body, not separate. You can't separate these. I separate them because they are, I have a spirit, my mind is not my spirit, and my body is not my mind. So there is a separation, but not like you think it is. They want you to say, well, this is who I really am, and this is not who I am. No, you can't separate that. This is who you are, and you are being renewed into the soul and body, because if you think about it, um, if you remember the, the thing we did here, this, if the mind's not re renewed, then the spirit can't do the will of God. It's got to work through, because it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's one. You can't, you can't divide it. All right, so what do I have next? Um, so the focus of spiritual formation is, my focus is Jesus and the Holy Spirit's doing the conforming. So my focus is Jesus. So when I open up this Bible, who do, who, what am I doing? I'm not learning how to do something better. I'm not learning how to have a better life. I'm not learning how to get the right answers. I'm, when I open up this Bible, it's looking for Jesus. And when I see the revelation of Jesus, I'm looking into a mirror, and I am being transformed right there from glory into glory. We've taught on that, so I'm... So let's, let's move on. All right? So who the Holy Spirit guiding me? 
leading guide me in the truth, ongoing journey that I have towards my union in Christ. Now let's look at spiritual formation again through this scripture, 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but even if our outer man okay, is perishing or being destroyed because it's, it gets sick, it gets broken, it gets bruised, you know, mm -hmm. eventually it dies. Okay? Though the outer man is perishing, yet our inner man or inner person is being renewed day after day. Spiritual formation. Is that, is, is that what should be happening? Not you going out making more money and being more famous and doing more and more and more in the, in the realm of the world. That, the outer man is decaying, but because I know what God's up to, and I'm yielding and abiding in him, John 15, I'm being renewed day by day, from glory to glory. Make sense? So the focus of spiritual formation is Jesus. Now, Matthew 16, 24. Now watch, let's now keep that in mind. Let's go to the next one. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, let him, now this is spiritual formation. Let him do what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So that means that you have to yield yourself to whatever the potter and the clay, you being the clay and the potter, is molding you into, again, transformation. Okay? Into the image of Jesus. Not the image of your hero. Not in the image of who you want to be. He's working on you to look like him. Why? Because you were... You were you understand, when he, his plan in the beginning in his mind that you look like him, that you're his image bearer. But the fall happened. Say so the case now. Because right here, the mind is, does not know who my true identity is, the true self. So that's what the spiritual formation is all about. So I can come into my true self and therefore glorify God in my body. I cannot glorify God in my body with a deceptive self. i got to know my true self, and it's over here. It's going to eventually be over here, but i got to get it by renewing my mind here. And when I get it, I now can do the will of God. All right, let me give you another one. The next verse, he tells you, right after that he says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. So anything you do, now we're going to talk about this maybe Sunday. I, I'm, I'm juggling two sermons here. I don't know which one I want to do. But if we do, you, we're going to really hit on, on this more deeper than that. That's just the shallow reading. There's a, deeper, there's a deeper reading to that. But anyway, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, meaning that if I come down here in this 70, 90 year span and fall in love with the ways of the world and the world and would rather have my way, Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, I'm going to lose my life. Oh, and you can make a lot of money doing it. You know that there are people, millionaires, but they lost their life. Fame and fortune lost their life. They went after their dreams and desires, but lost their life. So everything has to be, the cross has to be on every, your cross, I'm going to tell you right, the, the cross has to be on your marriage. The cross has to be on your kids. I call it a cross-shaped life. That means the cross, that, this, the scripture before, denying self, taking up the cross, not trying to save your marriage, save your family, save your job, save, save. You have to learn how to die to live. And that is a foreign concept, and you're probably like, oh, what? Let me ask you this. What did Paul mean when he said, death works in me, but life in you? We talked about this for two weeks on pain and suffering, and I let it go because that wasn't really the message. That was just a precursor to where we were going. But I'm going to go back and pick up on death again. And then you want to really understand what death truly is and what the cross really means. Because there's a lot of people that preach the cross, the cross, and that's all they, they, do, they don't take you further into what it really means. It, and they tell you this, deny yourself. What does that mean? Is that, does that mean I can't have two pieces of cake when I want one? Uh, what, what, is, what does that mean? 
I'm very frustrated because we are not being taught. We're not being taught. Okay, then the next one is if you try to save your life, you lose it. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you, once you find out what it means, we all are failing in this. When you really understand what it means, we're, we're all failing in this. We are, we are out to save our life. I'll prove that to you if I preach this Sunday. I'll show you how everything we do is in order to save something called our life. And it's not losing it. We're not losing our life to gain it. So we're all on the opposite spectrum of this. And that's okay because we've not been taught right. So there's no condemnation. But once you see this, you're going to go, oh, crap. This is crazy. And it is. So listen, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life on account of me will find it. And spiritual formation is, is going to cause you to lose your life so you can get it. So you can have it. And that's why you don't hear anything about it. Spiritual formation. You don't hear anything about what we're talking about, the cross-shaped life. All right? Um, so discipleship is part of the spiritual formation, the inner life. Our inner life is being developed from glory to glory by the Holy Spirit. Look at Ephesians 4.20. Now, now these next scriptures, watch how these scriptures work out. But you did not learn Christ. Now, he's talking to Christians in a church. And he told that church, you did not learn Christ. So what you got and what's happening didn't come from Christ. It's not the image of Christ. So whatever it is, he says, you didn't learn Christ this way. If indeed you've heard about him and you were taught by him, as truth is in him, next, that you take off, this is spiritual formation, take off according to your former way of life. So you're always going to be taking off those old mindsets. Because that's where the Spirit's working at, you're with truth. So, former way of life, the old man, who is being destroyed according to deceitful desires. And he says, be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. That's where the renewing happens. How do you take the old man off? By renewing the mind, the spirit of your mind. And put on the new man. Because once, once you get revelation, once, this, once the mind gets renewed... <clears throat> Uh, the, the, new, the new man gets put on because that's, that's who you are. So it's not taking off the old, putting on the new. More, it's more like you are not the old, so be the new that he made you before the foundations of the world. But in language, you're carrying the old because of an unrenewed mind. And once you see who you are, then you, you, you can cast off that coat. I ain't wearing that no more. That ain't who I am. And put on who I really am. Does that make sense? And put on the new man in accordance with God, who is created in righteousness. Now watch, that new man is in accordance with God, who is created in righteousness and holiness from the truth. All right? Holy. You are holy and righteous from over here. So let's be that. That's why he said, be this. Don't, don't sin. That's not who you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. This is who you will always be. So let's get with the program in this 70 to 90 year span. Quit believing the lies. Now, now we're going to, we've been dancing around it, but let's say it at Romans 12. Therefore, I exhort you, brothers, through the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Right there. But how do I do that? How, am I living, how, how do I make my body a living sacrifice for him? Many of us are making our bodies a living sacrifice for the world more than him. That's where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. It's going to show up on the other end. And the, and, and the fact that once your eyes are open to this and you still cling to the things of this world and not him, then you deserve everything you get on the other end. I don't, I don't know. But how do I present my body as a living sacrifice? Holy and pleasing to God, which is my reasonable service. So he's focusing. Here's where the will of God gets played out. So the next verse. And do not be conformed to this world. Whoa. So I cannot live. I cannot glorify God in my body by, by loving the things of the world and the world itself. He just said, don't be conformed to the world. So I can, <clears throat> if I conform to this world, my body will not be a living sacrifice. 
unto him, but, it will, but my body will be sacrificed for the world. See, when, you, when, you, when your whole focus is on isms and politics and, 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 your, and, and, and things that you love to do, and I'm not, I love doing things, but they can never ever stop and interrupt the flow of spiritual formation. And when they do, you have an idol on your hands. Does that, is, is that, does that make sense? I mean, I, I don't even, that's not even debatable. So what happens is, if I, if I buy into all of this, like most Christians are doing right now, let me tell you, most Christians are buying into politics. Now, it's their civil duty to go vote and to know the issues, but that's a separate, that's a separate issue. Okay? That's like, um, how many take vitamins here? Because hmm? you're worried about your... Yeah. So, does that, does that, has that got anything to do with spiritual formation? It's a point of man, what? Wants. Wants to die. So you can take all the vitamins you want. Now, you, it, it'll make you healthy. You won't be a sickling. But you're still, it's not going to make you live longer. He already has your date. So you, you know... You want to live forever, it's not happening. Wasn't that a song? Fame, um, I'm going to live forever. You're not. In the physical body, it's going to, you're, going to, you're going to put it down. It's going to be resurrected, but it's going to be put down. Oh man, there's so much here to what's coming. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss Sundays. Because what do you think turned those, those guys... Everybody has, or should not have, but everybody has the fear of death. What caused these disciples that ran for fear of death? Why, Jesus, why did Peter deny Jesus? Fear of death. Why now are they facing death in the face and not flinching? Because they saw Jesus' body get resurrected. They've never seen somebody's body get physically resurrected. Lazarus is one of them, but I don't know why that didn't work for them. But Jesus, three days, three nights, he comes, and they're like, I'm in him. If that's true of him, when I die, I'm coming right back in a physical body. Resurre I'm coming right back in a resurrected body. I'm, I'm, it's not the end. All that, I'm telling you, once you see this, you, you see death is not an end, but stepping over into where you will truly become human. You're not fully human on this end. You'll be fully human when you close your eyes and fall asleep, because they call it sleep, in your eternity. And they're like, I will never die. You can kill me. I'll be like him. I'll come back in a, in, in a resurrected body. you got to meditate on that. So don't, don't think, you, you know, if you're not getting it, that's okay, because I'm meditating on it, and I'm like, Man, why aren't we? Why are we not talking about this at funerals? No, because we have a fear of death. Why? Because we're always trying to be. I'm getting into my sermon Sunday. Forget it. All right, you gotta watch Sunday. Um, where am I at? I gotta hurry up. So, so my body has to cannot be conformed to this world, but it has to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. So, watch what happens. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you will approve what is good well-pleasing or perfect will of God. So the will of God gets done as my mind gets renewed on what he's raised me to and who I really am, my true self. And he does that by the Spirit. Okay? So, this includes our emotions as well. This is in our will, personality, reasoning, desires, intellect. All that gets, he shows us how to be fully human, how to have good desires, how to reason right, what to do with our elect. Okay? And so our union, is not, our union is not always bliss, but Jesus enters into our humanity, in our union, and is the light and grace in our dark places. So that means he's going to go into the mind, according to this, and he's going to renew it by taking out those things you believe for a long time that aren't true, that's impeding you to glorifying him in your body. All right? Now... Christ being formed in our hearts by faith. That, now, I don't have a scripture for that, but write that in. I think that's um, Galatians 4.19 and then Ephesians 3.17. So write that in there. F. Christ formed in your hearts by faith. Galatians 4.19 and um, 
I believe it's Ephesians 3.17. Now watch. We're winding this thing up. These, these scriptures here, spiritual formation focuses on Timothy. He tells you to reject the crap going on in the world. Now he's focusing, but I'm telling you, let's just bring it down to where we are. Reject all that crap out there that you're hearing. Okay? And train yourself. See, I got off of um, news, the news cycle, back in February. It was killing me. I didn't know it. I just needed to know what was going on. And then it made me start hating people. It made me start dividing from people. And I'm just like, ah, there's a better way to do this. I got off of it. I got off Christian television over a year and a half ago. Now watch. I'm just telling you, bunch of crap out there. But here's spiritual formation is that you train yourself for godliness. Do you, did you know that that scripture was there? You don't hear scriptures like this. Spiritual formation that we're talking about tonight is you training yourself in godliness. Well, I don't want to do that because that means I can't do certain things I used to do. But you're missing the whole point. When he gets in your head, you ever have somebody get in your head and you're like, get out of my head. Well, he, the Holy Spirit's going to get in your head and you're going to wake up and you're going to go, oh, that ain't me. I don't want to do that. Why, why have I spent my life on that? I gave money, time, and effort. Oh, my. And you, and, and you, you just, there's a shift that takes place. How many have had that happen? Things that you used to do, and you loved them, spent a lot of, and all of a sudden, like, ugh. Now, you can be critical that other people are doing it, that would be wrong to do, because you used to be there. But I'm telling you, as he gets in your head and begins to unlayer all those <clears throat> ungodly desires and wants and things that just, the world put there, the devil put there, you put there, your parents put there, media put there, he got to go in there now and take it all out. And as that gets taken out, you wake up with new drives and desires. It happens to me. Uh, many of you know I love music. I mean, I, I just love music. And I still do. But what's him, what, what, I, what I'm seeing a trend happening is, because I just turned it on the other day and I heard this song, and I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's dark. And then it hit me. The, how many heard the grunge music? Grunge in the 90s? Listen to that music. It's self-hatred. They, 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 you'll hear them say, I'm worthless. I'm a creep. I'm this. I'm that. And that's self-talk that the enemies placed in their heads and were singing those songs. And I was listening to that in the two, 90s and 2000s and identifying with it because I told you I have that problem of self-hatred. Because I'm a perfectionist, and when I'm not, and I blow it, I really get upset, and I'm really, I'm way hard on myself. And then what ends up happening is I'm hard on my kids, I'm hard on my wife, I'm hard on everybody, I'm hard on the church, I'm hard on because, ah. Uh. And one of those songs popped up the other day, and I love the song, but I'm like, wow, that's dark. And that's an area that he says, that's don't, don't that's not you. And I identified with those songs. And it may, as a man thinks, as a man sings, and I love that music. My God, you're taking away some stuff. But I'm not getting rid of him. He's just saying, that, that's, that's dark. That's not, and that's part of your self-talk. You, you guys got to get that book. No, don't, don't worry. I'm going to be with Donna on the radio. So, All right, anyway, train yourselves for godliness. For the training of the body. Oh, I thought I was a spiritual man. I thought this was about the spiritual man. The training of the body is somewhat profitable. But godliness is profitable for everything because it ends up affecting the body. But anyway, somewhat profitable. But godliness is profitable for everything. Godliness is profitable <clears throat> for everything. You want your life to look better? You want, you want a better you? Like they always you want a better you? Train yourself in God because it's profitable for everything. Get into spiritual formation and every area of your life will be profitable because godliness is profitable for everything because it holds promise. What does? Training yourself for godliness holds promise 
for the present life. Right here. See, you thought godliness, well, be godly for over there. He doesn't say that. I mean, it does, but it includes this. So because it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. It's a win-win. Training yourself in godliness is a win here and a win there. But if you're not training yourself in godliness, it's a loss here and a loss there. Do you see that? All right. Second Tim or Titus, look at this one. For the grace of God has appeared, and it brings salvation to us. What, what's the grace of God? You're in the grace message, the grace revolution. What is it supposed to be doing? Training us to deny ungodliness. Is that happening in the church today? Are we training ourselves in godliness and then by grace training us in order that we deny ungodliness and worldly desires? Grace isn't to be given so you can get away with stuff. Grace isn't given so you can get what you want when you want and how you want it. It's training you to deny ungodliness and worldly desires. And, we, and this is Paul speaking, by the way. Paul was speaking to Timothy and Paul is speaking to Titus. So don't say Paul. Well, that's, no, it's Paul. Paul is the grace guy. He's telling you what grace will do. So that we may live self-controlled, righteous, godly lives in this present age. God wants you to live this. Not for over here, but for here now in this present age. Spiritual formation is for now. Now, I've, those two scriptures there ought to convince you beyond any shadow of a doubt that that is something you need to sign up for. Spiritual formation. What's that? Oh, is it okay? Let's go on. Looking for the blessed hope, Jesus, and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. Purify. That's the pruning of John 15 we talked about. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the spiritual formation is really truly learning how to be human. Deepening one's relationship with the Father through Christ by the Spirit. Maturing one's faith. You can go down through there and read that in the context of the particular beliefs in Christ. Spiritual disciplines are tools to help our spiritual formation. They're pathways to use and then this requires time and energy. Then we're back to investment that I started with. What are you investing in? Are you investing into this new life? New way of living? Into the image of Jesus? And here's your spiritual disciplines. There's, there's a lot, but here's, here's, these are the main ones. Prayer, Bible study, fasting, meditation, to name a few. Those are tools. Those are gateways that God uses to, to, to um, conform you into his image. It's knowing self by knowing God, the knowledge of God. Again, the study of God, understanding God, Jesus, the Spirit, which brings an awareness and identity of who you are in Christ so that you can experience an encounter, meaning mystical experiences, supernatural encounters and experiences are you're going to... As this spiritual formation takes place, it's because you will be encountering Jesus and however he wants to encounter you. I mean, you'd be driving down the road and all of a sudden you get this huge revelation and you you, you got to stop. Or like him, he's got to get his phone out and start talking into his phone because he'll forget it or lose it. And that's, that's spiritual formation. So it comes through meditation, prayer, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's commit this close. So he says in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man. And that's what he's doing. He's making us into the image of Jesus so that we'll be fully human over there, but learning how to be human on this end. All right? Investing our time, our money, our effort into this, into this spiritual formation. Because I, I you know, because I am a perfectionist, and many are, some aren't, 
Um, anytime I want to learn something, and I really like something, and I want to learn it, I've always given it my 100% to learn the thing so I can have it or do it or whatever. And um, I mean, from bicycles to motorcycles, learn how to ride so you can do some crazy things with those. And I was always either on a motorcycle or a bicycle. And the more you learn that, the better you are at it. Or if I'm just trying to think now because I wasn't prepared to tell you that, um, but um, like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn the um, early fathers so that I can, I can understand our history. And it's fascinating. But how am I going to, I have to invest. I have to invest in what I want to know. I have to invest in what I want to learn. So if I want to learn Christ, Ephesians 4, you didn't learn Christ this way, so how do I learn Christ? I've got to invest in the person called relationship and study and prayer and meditation. That's how I learn it. And people do not want to invest because it takes time. Money? If I told you what I spent in the last 30 days on Amazon, you would not believe it. That's why I'm watching dogs right now because i got to pay for my bill that's coming. Because I knew I'm going to be watching these dogs. So I knew I could, and I'm telling you, it's in the hundreds. Hundreds. I'm probably going to have about a $1,000 Amazon bill, but it's said and done. Why? Because there are things out there I don't know. And it makes me mad that I was never taught this stuff. In the weak, shallow teachings of the churches that I was brought up in. So how, do I, how am I supposed to know this? Ain't on TV. I told you, what, what, was it Sunday morning I talked about Christian television? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You're not going to get anything from that. You're not going to get anything from that. Um, but I got to know. I want to know him. And so I want to give, I, I, if, if there's a source out there, and, I can, and, and God says that you, you need to get that, you need to get that, you need to listen to that, you, I'm going to do it. And, um, but what am I doing? I got to invest money. Okay? Second thing I got to do, I got to read those books. So that's going to take time. So I got to invest time. And then, that's just not that, because now I got to take it to the prayer. I got to take it to relationship. Now I got to take what I'm learning, and then I got to meditate on it. That means I got to sit there and go, hmm, Lord, if that means that, huh, and you do that, that scripture, and I talk to myself. I ain't, for, I ain't ashamed to tell you that. Meditation is talking to oneself. And I'm going to tell you, uh, you can take this to the bank. When I talk to myself, I learn a lot of stuff. Not from me. It's he's getting into the conversation. And I'm saying things I never thought of, and they're... So what I'm saying is, I gotta buy the books, I gotta read the books, I gotta meditate on the books, I gotta pray those books. That's investment. So what about you? Well, I'm not you, okay? But you still have to pray, don't you? But you gotta read the Bible. But you gotta feed yourself the Word. You have to invest in that stuff because the payoff won't it won't be there. Remember, he said godliness profits everything. That's payoff. No, we just want the, let me just go to so-and-so service. He's got a guy coming in for three days. Maybe I'll have a miracle. No, you're not. You're going to end up being the same person because you may have had hands laid on you and you may have felt goosebumps, but that mind did not get renewed. And you're going to leave the same guy. You'll be happier. But in the Monday morning comes around, those problems and those mindsets are still there because the church is not teaching spiritual formation. So I'm not interested in... I, I, I think revival will happen from spiritual formation, but revival will not take the place of it. It's the result of it, but not take the place of it. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm done. You can read the rest there. So, um, and you know the good news of this is, this is what we've been doing. You, you're probably already ahead of the game and thinking, this is what we've been doing. Yeah. So it's almost like you ran, you're, you're running a, a whole marathon and we just got to the half marathon mark. And all I'm saying to you is, let's keep going. This is what we've been doing. You, you, you guys just look at my sermons. You know this is what we've been doing, spiritual formation. I'm just using that term now 
just hitting it from another angle. But this is what we've always been done. You've never heard me promise you breakthrough. You've never heard me do special services. You, because, though, because that doesn't bring transformation. That brings a move of God. It can do some miracles. It can do some, but it's not taking the place of forming you in Christ. And that's more important than a miracle. <clears throat> You're not going to believe that. But, you, but it's the truth. No, one, no pastor or no theologians will, will disagree with me. It's more important for God to get the children of Israel to know him than taking them through a Red Sea. Oh, he split a Red Sea. God's like, that. okay, yeah, but it's to get them to know me. I'll do what I've got to do to get them to know me, so don't fall in love with my works and miracles and stuff because they're all designed to get you to know me. So um, God says, you want a miracle? Just, just know me. That's the miracle, that you get to know me. And if you get healed, great. And if you get delivered, fine. But that's not, that's not the top priority. I just showed you. You're, you're, the top priority of God is spiritual formation. But, that's, but the good stuff comes... Remember, godliness, everything profits from godliness. So you get a lot of stuff fixed. You want anxiety to go away? Train yourself in godliness. Get spiritually formed. And nothing against what you were saying earlier, okay? But I, I'm telling you, this is where we all go. Pray for me. I, I, can't, I can't pray a prayer that's going to take 70, 90 years that he's already destined for you to go through, and my prayer is not going to get you through it quick. My prayer is not, Pray for me. I, 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 have, I have stress. Okay? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not into that anymore. Because we've done that all our lives. You need to ask the Lord why you're stressing out. You don't need me to pray for you. You need to ask the Lord why you are under the gun the way that you are. And he will get in your head where, he, where the truth is. And he will show you where you're missing it. And boom, the stress will go because he'll show you the truth. And the truth does what? So again, prayers and quick Revival services are not your quick fixes in what I'm talking about. Now, I do believe praying for healing, and, 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 you know, and if you are anxious to the point that you're going to die tonight, I'll pray for you that God holds back until he can deliver you. But again, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Because it's all, it's all in the head, the unrenewed mind. Okay, any questions or comments? Go ahead. I just had this revelation as you were speaking about the spirit, soul, and body. It's what God showed the people in the tabernacle. The holy of holies, the inner court, and the outer court. Mm -hmm. And if we live, you know, at, at, in that day, they, they lived from the out end. We can live from the end, from the holy of holies looking out. Yeah. So if you're looking out, you can see things differently. Oh, yeah. Than That's if you're for sure. looking from yeah. the outer court. And that yep. He gave them directions to create all the things starting from the inside of the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Out. Yeah, so it's, it's the opposite now. He it's put us reversal. in. Yeah. And he made that possible. And this is just to add to that, because I love doing that, you know, <laughs> the, the scripture is showing you, is that when that, when that veil was rent, <laughs> you know that she's talking about the Holy of Holies and the, in the um, holy place, then the Holy of Holies in the outer court. There was a curtain, and I don't know, six feet thick. A curtain six feet thick. No man, no man, it took several men to lift it up, number one. And God, on the, when Christ died on that cross, he ripped that thing in two, making it possible for you to go into the Holy of Holies, and that's where you live from the inside out. And, just one more, his, by the way, we got to quit saying Jesus' body was broken. He was not broken. That's not scriptural. He said they didn't break his bones. Okay? So I know I'll, and I'll probably make that mistake because I'm just so... But it's a bruised, afflicted body. And when the flesh was ripped, that was a type of the rip. He ripped his flesh so you can get into divinity as he got into your humanity. But that's, that's another... That's part of what she's saying there. So we're in Christ. He let us in him as he first came into us. And then he said, when I die on that cross, you will come into me. 
and you'll be one. That's the purpose of the veil being torn, his flesh being ripped, to bring together humanity and divinity, making us the new man. Yeah. And living from the inside out, not from the outside in. Religion's doing it from the outside in, <coughs> not from the inside out. Good point. Anything, you wanted to say something? Yeah, two or three weeks ago, the Lord dropped into my spirit uh, Genesis 2, 7 where he made man from the dust of the earth and he breathed the breath of life into him. That's good. And he became a living soul. So I looked up soul to see, you know, what really that means. But uh, this is my words, is it, what is it, I got from it. Do you remember what it was? It's the essence of who he is. He breathed his essence into yeah. us. Well, and we became his essence. Then, in my spirit, it's a cross to, what is it, Second Corinthians 5, 17. Those mm -hmm. who are in Christ, mm -hmm. they became a new <clears throat> creation. And he just combined those two within me, that as Adam became the living soul, the essence of who God is, Christ gave us the spirit, the breath of life, and now we become the essence of who God is. Yeah, in our humanity. In our yeah, Because the, yes. the key to that was, I, I, believe it or not, <coughs> is that he made Adam from the earth. There's yes. nothing wrong with the earth. And there's nothing wrong with your flesh, your body. Right. That's Gnosticism that says, everything's evil, so be spirit. Because everything's e if everything's evil, God created the earth. I said it's the system that's evil. It's the people that's evil. But not you and not the earth. He wants you tied to this earth because Jesus came in on incarnation. It really changes a lot of stuff. All my life, I've tried, I'm trying to be spiritual, spiritual, and get out of this, this, this container or whatever, and it's bad, it's evil, it's this, it's that. And it's like, no. Jesus came to show us how to live in this human body. And it's not evil. You've been born again. You're the, you, you know, you, you now know, you're, you're this guy over here now. You've always been this guy. Let's put it that way. You're coming into that as the spiritual formation takes place. But do you guys understand that? You, 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 you go out there and look. And you see, well, let's look at the woman at the well. She's been married five times, and the man she's with now is not her own. Now, does Jesus say to her, Lamp lampoon her and tell her how bad of a person she is. It's the she's living that way as a result of what she's tied into in her humanity that she's lied to. She's been lied to. She's that way because she doesn't know who she is. And he's going to set her free. He's going to set her free. And so she doesn't keep repeating husbands. So what is it you are repeating in your life over and over and oh you're stuck in this cycle of behavior because you don't know who you are because you've done this thing and everything you do is a result of what you think, how you see yourself. And so he's coming to, to people at the well, he's going to the man born blind, he's, he's hitting every, go re, read, read your gospels now, maybe in a different light and watch him deliver people from the lies that created the sin that they're in, the diseases that they're experiencing, the demons that they're fighting, is all a result of them not knowing who they are. What's he say to Peter? Get thee behind me. Is he talking to Satan? He was talking to Peter. He's talking to Peter because Peter was believing a lie. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, G if, P if Jesus could call Peter Satan... What's he, what can he call us? <laughs> Let me give you another one. Your father's the devil. We talk, how many times we talk about that? But what he's saying when he says your father's the devil is that you, he's not, because he, we, we know who our father is. Okay? What he's saying is you've bought into this lie. You're living the lie, and you're living the life that, okay, again, Stockholm Syndrome. You could say to the sixth grader, you're acting like that guy is your, hus your husband and father. And if you want to really speak to her, you, you refer to her father. But you don't mean that it's her father. She's acting like the kid that that man made her be. 
Is this making sense? And Jesus came to show us the, and deliver us from the false father that we picked up along the way, Satan. Anyway, we could go on and on and on. Anything else? Any questions or comments? Yeah, I don't think it can get worse than being called Satan. <laughs> <laughs> But what did he say? You say after he called him Satan, he said, "You savor us not the things of God." Yeah. Right here is what you're savoring, Peter. You're trying to gain your <clears throat> life, and you're going to lose it. That's something to think about because he was talking about Jesus dying, and we all know that Jesus is of heaven. But Jesus still said, "You are savoring the things of this earth instead of." God's will. That's something to think about. I mean, that's all of us. I mean, we've got, what are we savoring? That's the stuff that he's going to get in there and purge, prune. Um, so anyway, um, let me just say this um, in closing, is that the church, this is what we've been doing on, on um, Thursday nights and Sunday mornings. This is what, if you go back and look at all the messages, this is what the radio is designed for. So here, here's where I, I just want to just, in case you, did, you missed it or you just need to be encouraged, everything we do is for the purpose of discipleship because Jesus did not tell us to fill the church. He didn't, say, he didn't say go into the world and get people to fill the building. He never said that. He said make disciples. And making disciples <coughs> is spiritual formation. So I can't do anything else. I'm going to tell you why. Because when I get over there at the judgment seat of Christ we've been talking about, he's going to say, you talked about prosperity. You talked about success. You talked about ambition. You, you gave them everything this world was offering them and put my name on it. But you never taught them how to take up their cross and really learn what spiritual formation is so I could be me and them and they could be them and me. You kept them from their identity because you locked them into the things of this world. You talked them into fall. I'm going to tell you, most preachers are talking their congregation into falling in love with the world. And they're using the name of Jesus doing it. I, I'm watching Christian television, no lie. 30 minutes, one of the most popular preachers, and I specifically waited to hear him say anything about Jesus, the cross, never said the word Jesus and never opened up the Bible and when I turn the cameras off I'll tell you who it is because I want you to see not a word about Jesus I, I thought dude step down what you did is you created a, you created a, you got a building and you got a following and you're not a pastor you're a coach you're a cheerleader you're a motivational speaker why don't you become a motivational speaker and put down the cloth and, and pick up the motivational speaking tools. And you know why? Because that's not, yeah, that's, that's not a 5013C. I got to have the 5013C. I have to pay taxes if I'm a motivational speaker. He'll pay for that. When he appears, I, I'm telling you, so I'm saying that, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> criticize him. What am I going to say to him? Did you preach me? Did you, did you do spiritual formation? Did you teach? What, what, what did you think? If I'm taking long, I'm sorry. But what do you think God meant to Peter when he said, feed my sheep? Three times he says, feed my sheep. What's he supposed to feed them? That's the, that, every pastor has to ask that question. What am I supposed to feed these people, God? Prosperity? Success? How to be a better you? Who am I feeding you with? Christ. I am the bread of the I am the bread of life that came down. Who's the bread of life? Jesus. She says, if you don't eat my flesh, drink my blood. Who are we feeding? That's why Paul says, I can't tell. I don't. I, you think about this. When I come among you, I determine nothing but Christ and crucified. Why? I dare not speak of anything else. Because I got to appear before the before the judgment seat of Christ. And what did I preach? Did I come with persuasive words? Did I come with excellency of speech? Did I come with worldly wisdom? Did I come with smoke and mirrors? I, 
I can't even dress, I, I'm not even supposed to dress to the hilt lest you see me and not hear the message. I can't have my building look like, uh, what's the guy in India that built the, the Taj Mahal? I, what am I want my building? What, I'm going to make the church look like the Taj Mahal? What are we, what, what, what are we, what are we doing? I can't preach nothing but Christ, and that's all I can do. You want something? And I know you don't, just saying. You want something more than that? I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give it to you. I'm not supposed to give it to you. That's not what the church is supposed to be doing. <clears throat> Father, we bless you. And we've all fallen short of this, so I'm not throwing stones. We've just fallen, all of us. But we got a we got a zero in an even greater degree because the scales have been so tipped in the other way. The church is biblically illiterate. They can't even read the scriptures in a shallow manner because they don't know the scriptures. No one's opening up the Bible anymore. God, forgive us and give us the grace to be able to rise up in this day and age where there's definitely a famine in the land and preach the cross, preach Christ and him crucified in a way that's, that causes us to live a cross-shaped life. Amen.